Hello and welcome to the lecture on multiple linear regression. Um, the steps in multiple linear regression follow the same steps as a simple linear regression. We inspect the univariate and bivariate statistics. The main difference is in the check the model stage there will be an extra step there but also interpreting the difference between the bivariate and the linear regression statistics get slightly more complicated. First of all, we're going to look at the same studies last time. However, this time the two independent variables are weight and height, and we're going to try and use a person's weight in pounds and their height in inches to predict their brain size, which in this case um, is MRI times 1,000. MRI 10K down the bottom, as you can see, has got um, a mean of 90. Again, we're looking for central tendency variability, skewness, ketosis, and whether it's unimodal. It's good on all accounts, except it's slightly right skewed. We're not too fussed about the two independent variables. They can be normally distributed, uniformly distributed, or even strangely distributed. They are not paramount to the assumptions of linear regression. Bivariate statistics look slightly different this time. We have got more statistics in the mix. Initially, we f at this table, we first look at the relationship between the two IVs and the DV, um, and then we look at the d relationship between the two IVs. So we'd say weight on its relation to the DV, height on its relationship to the DV, and then the relationship between the two IVs. We are particularly concerned if the two IVs are related to each other because that could indicate collinearity, which will have um, implications out interpretation. This is what the different scatter plots look like. All of them are positive, all of them are linear. There's very little reason to have um, issues with this, except for, again, that the two IVs are correlated with each other. That is a problem. We run the linear regression um, and we see that our R is 0.6, which is quite good, or 36.6%. We get an ANOVA table and a coefficients table um, as follows. First of all, we can say that 36.6% of the variance is accounted for by the two IVs, and the conditional standard deviation is 56.94. Sorry, 5.94. Um, we can um, go onto the ANOVA table and comment on the conditional standard deviation, which we just previously saw on that table being 5.94. We can also find it from root mean squared error of 35.263. Um, we can also make the conclusion that the model is significant, i.e. height and weight significantly predict brain size. We don't know which one. We didn't know which one how. We can report on the F statistic and its significance level. The null hypothesis testing is at least one of the betas is equal to zero, that is either height and or weight. We don't know which one it might be, we have to look below to find out. We look below the significance levels and we find that in fact height is significantly related to the DV but not weight, but we'll deal with that in a minute. For now we need to remember how to write out the regression equation. It takes a similar format as before except this time we have an additional IV at the end with an additional gradient. We can still say exactly the same things though. We can talk about the y-intercepts and then the two gradients. We start off by talking about the y-intercept by saying when a person's weight is equal to zero and a person's height is equal to zero, they're their MRI 10K is 25.562, um, or the y-intercept, then we can interpret the gradient. So we can say for every one unit increase in the IV, there is a such and such increase in the DV. However, one thing you have to include in this sentence now is holding the other variable at a constant. So for every one inch increase in a person's height, there is a 0.816 increase in the pixel count and the brain size holding weight constant. What this effectively means is previously we were just looking at the effect of weight or height on brain size. Now what we're doing is when we're looking at, for example, how someone's height might affect their brain size, we're keeping weight at a constant. So we're comparing against people with the same weight, whether their height predicts their brain size or vice versa when we are holding weight at a constant we're looking where the height predicts their brain size we're holding weight constant um, we can also predict from this linear regression equation for someone who's 72 inches and 150 pounds substitute that into the formula and we can predict what their um, predicted brain size is going to be and we can write a sentence about it um, 
as such. We could also calculate the residual, we won't go into details, but that's done exactly the same way as we did it for simple linear regression. Um, we can make a nice little summary table like this that tells us the R and the R squared, or the univariate variables, um, and then we can also report on the unstandardized coefficients, the standardized coefficients, and so forth. At this point, it's important to note the standardized coefficients have a slightly different value or meaning than what they did before. Now they are the standardized version of our gradient. If our gradient is 0 0.062 and 0 0.816, that's the standardized version next to it. The standardized number can range from minus 1 to plus 1, and it can be compared across models as it is a standardized coefficient. The unstandardized coefficients can only be used in this model. We also notice that when we add the two r squares together, um, they don't sum to the multiple r squared. Now, there's a reason for that. That's because height is confounded by the variable of weight, or vice versa, depending on the research question. There's two other situations that could have happened. If both the r squares sum to the total model r squared, then we've got orthogonality. The effects of weight and height have got no no um, overlap on their effect on brain size. Or the other possibility, when including both in the model, their explanatory power increases compared to just singularly having one in a model on its own. So those are the three tables again, um, and we'll go through the next step. This time we have to check the model, so we have to look at all the predictors in the model and kick out any that aren't significant. So in this case, weight's not significant, so we went and holding height constant, um, but height was. So we should really ideally fit the model with only height in the model. We're not going to refit it now, um, but just for the purposes of this demonstration, we've got an example where we could remove it, but we're not going to. So we're going to test the assumptions of the original model, that is the um, one with both height and weight. Again, you've got to ask whether the data was drawn from a random sample. Um, you've got to assess the residuals for normality. In this case, we'd say they're right skewed and there's some snaking of them. However, the Shapiro-Wilk um, is not significantly greater than 0 0.05, a significant less than 0 0.05. It's not on this slide, but um, we ran that test and there was no significant violation of the assumption normality. Um, this is the effect of constant variance. Um, as you can see um, on the slide, there is two graphs and um, at the bottom, one is the specifically looking at the effect of linearity and constant variance with weight and then with height, both individually on the DV. That's attained by plotting the residuals with either IV. The scatter plot on the top right assesses the overall model's constant variance and linearity, whereas the bottom two assess weight and height. We would say that weight quite possibly has got some fanning from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, but nothing really to get too particularly worried about. Um, finally, following up on the steps of linear regression, um, we've done everything, let's answer the research question, we'd say that height, yes, is a significant predictor of brain size, whilst holding weight constant. If the research question was about weight, we would say, no, weight not significant when holding height is constant. Remember, you've always got to answer the question that they ask. So thank you very much. That concludes the multiple linear regression lecture. Thank you very much, and stay tuned for more at letsgetstatistical.com. Bye-bye.